The story of Stella's sea cow is an important one to know. It's a cautionary tale that everyone should be aware of, to truly appreciate the devastating effects that humans can have on the life of this planet, and the relevance of conservation efforts. There once existed an incredibly remarkable creature quite unlike anything alive today, and we were so close to seeing them in the flesh. Approaching 8 to 9 meters in length and 11 tons in weight, this organism was first encountered by a scientist in the year 1741, and then, in less than 30 years, it was completely extinct. The death of Stella's sea cow seems to have therefore been the first instance in modern human history that a marine mammal fell prey to the direct actions of our own species. There really is nothing like these animals left around today. Stella's sea cow, technically named Hydrodomalis gigas, is related to the dugong and manatees and are thus classified as Cyrenians along with these modern taxa, being placed within the dugongidae family. But, these extinct sea cows had adapted to some very different habitats, and this had led to a pretty different anatomy evolving. Instead of inhabiting warm waters around the tropics like extant Cyrenians do, Hydrodomalis had spread into much colder sub-arctic waters further north, and therefore some novel changes occurred in the species to make them better suited to these areas. Most obviously, the creatures got enormous. This would probably have been in order to reduce the surface area to volume ratio of the animal's body, and as a result reduce the amount of heat loss to the surrounding cold waters. The huge sizes of almost 10 meters long means that Stella's sea cow would actually have been one of the biggest mammals alive at the time, rivaling some whales in its dimensions. Also like whales, Hydrodomalis had very thick blubber underneath its skin, apparently getting to around 10 centimeters thick in certain regions, another adaptation to reducing heat loss. The skin of the organism was reported to have been quite unique too, being bark-like and rough along the sides, but smooth on the back, with a mostly black-brown coloration and sometimes a few white patches. This unusual roughened texture is suggested to have protected the animals from cuts and scrapes due to sharp bits of ice and rock as they swam in their shallow water habitats. Hydrodomalus had some pretty interesting feeding adaptations, as they mostly ate kelp and algae. The Cyrenians completely lacked teeth as adults, but instead used two keratinous pads, one on the roof of its mouth and one at the bottom, to grind up their food. In addition to these pads, the creatures possessed interlacing white bristles on the front of their downturned snouts, which apparently were used in slicing up and grasping the kelp and seaweed they were feeding on. Bristles were also present on the insides of their forelimbs, and the forelimbs themselves were pretty heavily modified structures compared to those seen in living Cyrenians. They did not have any phalanges or finger bones, and were described by people who witnessed them as being short and hooked, allowing for many uses of the limbs such as pulling the creatures along in shallow water, swimming, picking up food, and clasping during mating. The skin was also very thick on the limbs, aiding in these activities. Another way that Hydrodomalis differed from the manatees and dugong is in its buoyancy control. Extant Cyrenians are capable of controlling their buoyancy, however Stella's sea cow was reportedly unable to even fully submerge underneath the water's surface. This has been suggested to be due to the larger size of this species, which resulted in a lot more blubber, and an increase in lung and intestine volume. These animals were gregarious creatures, living in small family units of a bull, cow, and calf, and gathering into large groups to feed. They were also apparently monogamous, and would protect their offspring when feeding by staying behind them and at their sides. Witnesses reported that Hydrodomalis actually showed evidence of altruistic behaviour, as in one case where a member of a grazing herd was shot by a harpoon, other sea cows gathered around and attempted to assist the wounded individual. Then there was also the story of a female sea cow being caught, and her bull partner following her and ramming the boat she was taken on, before waiting for three days near the beach where she was brought and killed. So, seeing how unique this species was, and how seemingly peaceful they were, it makes their loss all the more upsetting. But how exactly did this occur? How were they even discovered in the first place? Well, in 1741, a German zoologist called Georg Wilhelm Steller was on board a ship that became wrecked on Bering Island. Staying on the island for about a year, Steller was able to research and document the animals that lived there, including the sea cows that would be named after him. Most of the information we currently have about this species is thanks to the observations made by Stella, including details of anatomy that were gained from individuals caught and cut up by the sailors. 
However, despite the significance of the discovery of a giant Cyrenian living in subarctic waters in the Bering Sea around the Commander and Aleutian Islands, this did not stop what happened just 27 years later. The sea cows were in a very unfortunate situation, since they shared their habitat with large populations of sea otters, which were the target of Russian fur traders. At this time in the 1700s, fur was becoming increasingly valuable, and so furry animals became highly sought after. The problem for Stella's sea cow came when the traders needed food to keep them going along the route between Russia and America, and the large bodies of Hydrodomalis, with their thick blubber and masses of meat, proved to be the perfect prey. Apparently the meat of these animals tasted similar to beef, and the blubber was tasty too, in addition to being useful in cooking and as lamp oil. It also now seems as though the sea cows were already under threat from when Stella first documented them, with a very small population, and this hunting pressure from humans pushed them over the edge and into extinction. As the hunting continued, the population grew smaller and smaller, until naturalists concluded that the species must have completely disappeared by 1768. There is fossil evidence that indicates the previous range of the genus Hydrodomalis once spread much further, along the coast of Japan and over to the North American coast. So, the population inhabiting the Bering Sea appears to have been a relict population in danger of dying out anyway, as they had already undergone local extinctions in other regions. It's also possible that Europeans travelling between Russia and America may not have been the only ones involved in the sea cow extinction, with natives of the Aleutian Islands and the Siberian Yupik people potentially having preyed on the species in the past, reducing their populations before their final extinction. The death of this species has also been proposed to have been linked to the hunting of otters in another way too. When Aboriginal peoples went after the sea otters and their populations decreased as a result, sea urchin populations would have risen, since otters feed on them and control their numbers. Sea urchins are capable of significantly depleting supplies of kelp, the primary food source of Stella's sea cow, and so with fewer otters about, Hydrodomalis was also facing a shortage of food. The hunting by sailors would certainly have been the final straw in their demise though, and by the time anyone had realised that the sea cows were becoming rarer and rarer, it was too late for them. The 1768 extinction date was given by a German naturalist in the 1800s, based on reports of fewer sightings of the animals and eventual reports of their absence. There are actually a few claimed sightings of the species from after 1768, into the 1800s, and even supposedly from the 1900s. The 20th century reports are most likely misinterpreted sightings of other animals, such as elephant seals, and would be impossible to properly verify anyway. The earlier reports though could possibly imply that the sea cows had just moved away from land and into deeper waters by 1768, before then succumbing to the difficulties brought about by a new habitat they weren't as suited to. Whatever the exact extinction date was, there have not been any confirmed sightings of Hydrodomalis for many years. Our species undoubtedly has a lot to learn from the loss of these animals. This was the first time in the modern history of humanity that we were responsible for the total extinction of a marine mammal. It would not be the last time this occurred, though hopefully something like this never has to happen again. It's interesting to consider what the sailors might have been thinking about the fewer and fewer sightings of the sea cows, at a time when extinction was not well understood, or even thought to be possible at all. So, I think it's important to know how close we came to being able to see these fascinating animals with our own eyes, only for the wastefulness and lack of understanding of humanity to rob us of this opportunity. These creatures were so unique, really unlike anything else that lives on this planet right now, and it's truly heartbreaking to think that we've lost them forever. It would be even worse to think that more unique species of incredible marine mammals could one day disappear too and I hope future generations of humans will not be looking back on species of whales and pinnipeds and making videos about how they wish they could have seen those recently extinct animals. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and perhaps now have a greater appreciation of the need for effective conservation efforts in order to avoid any more disasters like this one. If you would like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.